Day five of suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton's impeachment trial is marked by a whistleblower testifying that Paxton's friend and campaign donor acted like he was the real boss of the AG's office. The witness said he warned that Paxton could put himself in legal jeopardy by helping Nate Paul and that Paxton expressed a personal grudge against law enforcement. Fox 4 Sean Rabb joining us in studio with more of today's testimony. Sean. Yes, former deputy over criminal justice spent about four hours testifying about phone calls and meetings with the attorney general around Nate Paul, who is the subject at the center of this impeachment trial with Ken Paxton. In a meeting with Paxton and Paul, Mark Penley informed the office would not investigate his claims any further, and that, he testified, brought an angry response from Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul acted like we didn't understand who the real boss was. It wasn't the attorney general, it was him. That was his body language, that was the expression on his face, the way he bowed up, he got very unhappy with us. Nate Paul wanted the attorney general's office to look into his allegation that laws were broken during the search of his businesses and home by state and federal authorities. Paul wanted the AG's office to investigate troopers, FBI agents, an assistant U.S. attorney, and a federal judge. Mark Penley said he and former AG law enforcement director David Maxwell, who testified Friday, decided to slow walk the investigation, hoping Paxton would drop it because he thought it was crazy. Why did you think it was crazy? The idea that the state of Texas attorney general's office would go investigate the federal courthouse investigate federal agents and also state agents that were task force officers on the raid and that those were agents from the DPS and the state securities board that we would investigate a federal magistrate judge and federal prosecutors was insane. Penley, a former deputy in the AG's office, testified in phone calls and meetings Paxton kept pushing for Paul's claims to be investigated. I asked him why he was so interested in this investigation when he was not interested in all the other criminal investigations and cases we had pending in the office. All right. And what was his response? His response was, I don't know about the other cases, but I know about this one, and I'm concerned about corrupt law enforcement because of what's happened to me. That in reference to Paxton's 2015 indictment on securities fraud charges, still pending to this day. Penley told the court he met the attorney general at Paxton's request at a Dunkin' Donuts in McKinney, September 26, 2020. That's when he learned Paxton had contracted Brandon Kamak as outside counsel, another extraordinary move to push forward Nate Paul's claims. How was the tone of this conversation? He was frustrated, and, and that was the most, um, it wasn't a hostile conversation, but it was a difficult conversation. How did the conversation end? And I was trying to walk him back from what I thought was a dangerous line he was trying to cross. And I told him all my reasons that he could face criminal charges, bribery, other things. It could be a media scandal. He could get himself in a lot of trouble. He needed to leave this alone, to back away from it. On cross-exam, Paxton attorney Jay Mitchell Little focused on Penley and Maxwell, quote, slow walking the investigation. And Ken Paxton was upset with you that in six weeks, you and David Maxwell had done donut, nothing. True? Which part of the nothing. question do you want me to answer first? You asked me if we'd had it for six weeks. That is true. And it's also true we had done no investigating in that six weeks. Challenging what proof Penley had that Paxton had done anything wrong. On September 26, did you have any physical evidence, documentary evidence, eyewitness evidence, or circumstantial evidence that Ken Paxton had committed or been bribed by Nate Paul? I had circumstantial evidence. Anything else? I had his behavior. Anything else? The campaign donation. Anything else? His absolute refusal to listen to common sense and reasonless uh, legal positions. He wouldn't listen to anybody on the executive staff. There was another staffer this afternoon testifying about the Paxton affair and the impact of the morale on the attorney general's office. Now this morning, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick says testimony could end Thursday. Each side will then get one hour for closing statements. Senators will have to stay in Austin and deliberate through the weekend if necessary until they come to a decision. Okay, Sean, thank you. All right.
You can watch the trial. It's streaming live on fox4news.com, the Fox 4 YouTube and Facebook pages. And when we're not in a newscast like we are at this moment, it's available on Fox Local. That's our streaming channel on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. It's free to download and no login is required.